these are deeply troubling times, and the Supreme Court's taking up the United States versus Texas really accentuates that issue. Sometimes it's nice to just pause and pay tribute to folks. For example, beautiful couple here is a pastor. Um, his name is Pastor Jesse Estrada Sibelian and wife Maria Sibelian. They're with their granddaughter in this picture. Beautiful. You can feel the love emanating from the picture. Uh, Pastor Jesse Estrada Sibelian uh, was a Baptist member, minister at Nuevo um, Amonisar Baptist Church of Houston in the Cloverleaf area. Uh, he was an excellent carpenter, owned a home remodeling business, J.J. and Sons Remodeling. Uh, his wife, Maria, tell she loves her granddaughter, was a retired home caregiver with, for children with special needs. So a beautiful couple, um, Mr. Sibelian never accepted a salary from the church and instead right, relied upon his job as a carpenter f to feed his family. So it appears that Pastor Sibelian uh, was working and act, acting in the vein of the apostle, um, well, and Peter and Paul. Um, particularly Paul, he didn't want to be a burden to others, so made tents, sewed, did whatever he needed to so that he wasn't a burden to others. Instead of being a burden to others, Pastor Sibelian and his wife Maria, they were a blessing to Texas, they were a blessing to the Houston area and to so many with whom they helped, the special needs kids that Maria helped with. And uh, it appears that Jesse, pastor of Sibelian, was doing what Jesus said to do, you know, to be a light to others, to be salt of the world, to, to uh, minister to others' needs. Or as Jesus told Peter, if you love me, you'll tend my flock. Well, Pastor Sibelian did that, and apparently did that very well. Um, this story, April 15th, um, Alexis De La Rosa Sosa, 21, is a Mexican national who entered the United States illegally. Um, HCSO, apparently Houston County Sheriff's Office, public information officer, Ryan Sullivan confirmed in a phone interview with Breitbart, Texas, um, his intake, and by his means Alexis De La Rosa Sosa, his intake form says, U.S. citizen, no, alien status, illegal. De La Rosa Sosa was wanted in connection with a street racing crash where Pastor Jesse Estrada Sibelian and his wife Maria Sibelian were killed. The couple was driving home Tuesday night after visiting their niece who had just given birth to a baby when they were struck by the truck. The suspect is reported to have fled the scene following the crash and did not turn himself in until Friday morning about 10 a.m. He was allegedly driving a 2006 Chevy pickup truck and was said to be racing with a dark-colored Dodge Challenger or Charger, the Houston Chronicle reported on Wednesday. The two vehicles were said to be racing along the Sam Houston Tollway when De La Rosa 
Sosa was reported to have run a red light striking the 2004 BMW 330 driven by a civilian. The couple were both pronounced dead at the scene of the crash. De Rosa Sosa said to have fled the scene on foot. The driver of the Dodge fled the scene in his vehicle. Officials with the Harris County Sheriff's Office quickly notified the family of the pastor who expressed release, relief at the news, talking about the apprehension of the suspect. De La Rosa Sosa is currently processing in the Harris County Jail and has not yet made a court appearance. He expected to be charged in connection with the two homicides and fleeing the scene of the fatal accident. Look, we know there's some wonderful people who have come into this country illegally. There have been. But there's no question that criminals have taken advantage of the situation to cross our border since it's been porous and to um, inflict crime on people of the United States. There should be a little doubt about that. And then we have this story um, from the Washington Free Beacon. Number of children illegally crossing border up 1,200 percent between 2011 and 2014. Ironically, um, just happens to be as people were finding out south of our border and in other parts of the world that if you make it into the United States illegally, then you're probably going to stay. Odds are 97 percent you'll stay. Uh, as Border Patrolmen have told me, drug cartels across our southern border call our Border Patrol, our Homeland Security, the logistics and they laughingly say if they get people illegally into the country, then Homeland Security is the logistics that ships them wherever they want them to go in the country. As I've seen a number of times in the middle of the night as people are being processed. And like, for example, the one older lady who was asked how much she paid. Some would say six, some would say seven thousand, five thousand, eight thousand. But on a number of occasions, a border patrolman has challenged them, where'd you get that kind of money? You didn't have that kind of money. And it normally took uh, repeated questioning to elicit an answer. Well, you know, I paid eighteen hundred from family in this place and some people sent 2000 from the United States, and uh, I'm going to pay the rest by working it off in the United States. They would tell them where they want to go. Amazingly, Homeland Security has sh shipped people that have come into the country illegally all over the country. We have reports about Mexican drug distribution in all of our major cities. And when you know that Homeland Security is shipping people that still owe the drug cartels money into different cities, it's not hard to figure out how they're getting some of their uh, less than happy workers helping them with their drug distribution. This article from Adam Credo says uh, in this Washington Free Beacon, number of children apprehended on the U.S. border attempting to immigrate illegally has surged more than 1,200 percent since 2011. And the number of these children crossing the border during 2016 could be another record, according to a newly released government report. The number of unaccompanied alien children, UACs, Illegally crossing the U.S. border has increased sharply since 2011 with a surge of more than 1,200 percent just between 2011 and 2014, 
according to the Congressional Research Service. The agency also disclosed that the flow is increasing significantly in the first five months of fiscal 2016. The illegal immigration of these children had record-breaking numbers in 2014, with the U.S. officials apprehending more than 52,000 alien children. Nearly 20,000 have been apprehended within the first five months of 2016, setting the stage for another potentially record-breaking year. This unexpected surge of children strained U.S. government resources and created a complex crisis of humanitarian implications, the report said. They increased in the first five months of FY 2016. However, experts warn that significant migration flows will continue until policymakers in the country of origin and the international community address the poor socioeconomic and security conditions driving Central Americans to leave their homes. Well, that's interesting, but I would submit, Mr. Speaker, that actually they will continue to surge as long as they uh, are led to believe by the administration and the evidence continues to indicate that they will be allowed to stay in America, will send them where they may claim to have relatives, or where the drug cartels tell them to request to be sent. And just in the last few weeks, spending some days and nights on our border, our southern border, it's heartbreaking what you see, because there are people that clearly want a better way of life. They're leaving the country of origin because their countries do not enforce the rule of law. There's graft, there's corruption, and the rule of law, the law is not evenly and fairly supported and enforced across the board. Therefore, the jobs aren't there. There are more opportunities here in the United States because although we have breakdowns, we do try to enforce the law more evenly than I would submit anywhere in the world, at least until more recently, when this administration makes exceptions of millions of people who are assured that they can violate the law with impunity and will be rewarded for it. So people come from countries where there's no equality under the law, and they come to this country, and as soon as they get there, for those of us that were out in front of the Supreme Court today, being shouted down by people who were angry, many of them shouting in Spanish, fine. But we were told that people in their positions were all in the shadows. Now, I did see some people lounging around under a few trees, but most of them were not in the shadows. They were, in fact, on the steps of the Supreme Court right there in front, uh, yelling and screaming and showing disrespect for the national uh, U.S. national anthem and uh, yelling, trying to prevent freedom of speech. Um, it's just really interesting seeing posters like Jesus was an immigrant. Well, sort of. But he never violated the law. He never encouraged anyone else to violate the law. And in fact, he urged people to go forth and do wrong no more. Uh, but that's not the case. The great and really tragic irony of what's taking place is people coming to America illegally, demanding that the laws not be properly enforced not be fairly enforced. Sure, there have been millions and millions and millions and millions of Americans who have come through our system legally, but we're the millions that did not come legally, and we demand to have the same treatment as if we did come legally. Now, if we do that, it will not be long before we will be in the same shape as the countries these people fled from because there's not adequate opportunities. 
we'd be, since there is not adequate room for the billion or so we've been told may want to come to America around the world, it would be far better to encourage their nations to end grafting corruption, to treat people fairly across the board. Here's the article from um, Center for Immigration Aliens released by ICE, uh, who'd already been convicted of thousands of crimes, are responsible for a significant crime spree in American communities, including 124 aliens who were charged with 135 new homicides. Uh, inexplicably, ICE is choosing to release some criminal aliens multiple times. These are people that not only came into the country illegally, but have committed crimes multiple times, many of them, while they're here. Uh, at least they've certainly been charged with them. A uh, total of 121 criminal aliens who were freed by ICE over the five-year period between 2010 and 2014 were subsequently charged with homicide-related crimes within that time frame. Three more were charged in 2015. These 121 accused murderers were associated with 250 different communities in the United States, with the most clustered in California, New York, and Texas. These aliens were charged with a total of 135 homicide-related crimes after release. Two of them had homicide-related convictions even before they were released. These aliens had 464 criminal convictions, not just charges, convictions, prior to release by ICE. No three aliens who were released by ICE during the, that time were charged with homicides during the first 10 months of 2015. This does not include the aliens who were released by sanctuary jurisdictions nor those aliens that were released by local law enforcement agencies after ICE declined to take them into custody due to Obama administration priority policies. This list includes only those aliens that ICE arrested and then released. The list presumably includes murderers like Apolinar uh, Altamirano, an illegal alien who was arrested by ICE in 2013 following his conviction on local charges involving burglary and abduction, but who was released on a $10,000 bond, permitted to remain free, and elect to have deportation proceedings that would take years to complete. Then in January 2015, Altamirano shot and killed 21-year-old Grant Ron Ronanek, I'm sorry, Ronabek, while he was working at a convenience store while Altamirano had come to buy cigarettes. Um, ICE has previously disclosed that 75% of the homicidal criminal aliens were released due to court orders, including the so-called uh, Zadvitas cases in which the aliens' home country would not take them back. The rest were released by ICE choice. Uh, Article also points out that in 2014, ICE released a total of 30,558 criminal aliens from its custody. Uh, these aliens had already been convicted of 92,347 crimes before they were released from their custody by ICE. Um, as of July 25th, 2015, a total of 1,895 aliens have been charged with a crime after being free. Um, in separate communication, ICE provided a list of countries that are cur currently uncooperative in accepting their deported citizens. Afghanistan, Algeria, Burundi, Cape Verde, China, Cuba, Eritrea, Gambia, Ghana, Guinea, India, Iran, Iraq, Ivory Coast, Liberia, Libya, Mali, Mauritania, Morocco, Sierra Leone, Somalia, South Sudan, and Zimbabwe. We have the power 
to force these countries to either take back their citizens that have come illegally into this country or are illegally in this country, particularly if they've committed crimes in this country, or have consequences. Instead, this administration chooses to provide benefits to countries like Iran and Afghanistan, for goodness sakes. Make sure they're running out Christians and Jews out of Afghanistan, but shouldn't they at least take back their own people? I mean, last time I was told by um, one of the leaders in Afghanistan that their budget was around, this is a few years ago, around $12 billion a year. They only provided about a billion and a half. All the rest came from other countries, and most of that was from the United States. If they won't take their people back, then shut the government down. They'll take their people back. This is ridiculous. Um, also, a point was made in this article. As of July 2015, only about 3% of the 30,558 criminal aliens freed by ICE in 2014 have been removed. Uh, ICE reports 28,000 still have a pending immigration case as of July 25th, 2015. Um, but some of them don't show up through their hearings. Many don't. The largest percentage do not. And uh, they're just given notices to appear. Um, a recent national gang unit led operation included in, and this is from a different article, from um, article ICE arrests more than 1,100 in operations targeting gangs. He's talking about all the efforts to capture gangs. Um, so let's see, of the 1,133 arrests, 1,915 were gang members and associates. 1,001 were charged with criminal offenses, 132 arrested. Uh, just more and more numbers, drugs, firearms, currency. But again, about 3% apparently is all they're removing of those who are committing crimes in the country. Um, Jessica Vaughn from a year ago had an article May 28th uh, the non-deported, I still releasing criminal aliens at a rapid pace. And she documents that, uh, according to this article, the majority of convicted criminal releases occurred because Obama administration policies require ICE officers to let the offenders go. In some cases, judges aliens to be released after a bond hearing, but the conditions are usually set by ICE ICE attorneys say they have been instructed not to vigorously contest an alien's request for release. Which brings us back to civilians. My Christian brother, my Christian sister are gone. And we don't enforce our immigration laws as the oath taken by those in this administration required. Now, I want to finish up by mentioning, um, again, about my being on the border. I, I was so struck. Uh, Texas has utilized and provided massive amounts of money to try to help us defend our border. Uh, the number one area through which people are coming into the United States moved some years back from Arizona to the McAllen Corridor into Texas. And uh, I had occasion to be on a DPS boat with fantastic uh, uh, DPS officers. They've got fantastic equipment that allowed them to, to use, that they were able to utilize to spot people that were clearly getting ready behind bushes and whatnot to cross the Rio Grande from the Mexico side into the U.S. It appeared clearly some of them were just people that were going to be brought across. Some were carrying things. Maybe they were drugs. We don't really know. Uh, 
after we had spotted these folks cruising down the river on the DPS boat, and there were a couple of Border Patrol boats, much smaller, and there were other assets that allowed us once we identified where these people were, uh, so the Federal Border Patrol would know. After we stayed silent for a while, finally got a radio message from the Border Patrol asking us to go ahead and return back to the dock way on down the river so that they could try to uh, intercept these, these folks. Well, fine, because I know the Department of Public Safety, if they see a raft coming across, they will stop them, uh, and they do destroy the raft, which, as I understand it, gets the coyote in trouble with the drug lord that uh, sent him with the raft with people that had paid money to get him across. So the DPS would do that. So they said, why don't you go ahead? They're waiting for you to leave the area, and then, then we can interdict. We can catch them red-handed. Turns out that's exactly what they did. We spent massive amounts of money and effort spotting be people before they came across the river illegally, whether it was bringing drugs, whether it was people coming across. We knew where they were. We spotted them, directed the Border Patrol to them, and I say we as the – our Department of Public Safety people in Texas. And we got word that's exactly what they were waiting for. They came across after you left the area, and now we're in processing them into the United States. We have the power to secure our border, but this administration has no will, and that's why children, unaccompanied children, are up 1,200%. I've seen tiny little girls, couldn't have been more than three or four, just in the last trip down, the days I spent down there. Girls like that who say, oh, I'm unaccompanied, I guarantee you they did not cross that river unaccompanied. They did not come a thousand miles across Mexico. They were accompanied. Thank God they were not sold into sex trafficking as so many have been. When we in the United States, as I've been told by African friends, some of which I've seen in the last month, say we're the hope of the world. And when we don't follow the law, when we don't enforce the law, when we don't enforce our own laws, the world suffers. And as Christians in Africa have told me, we know where we go when we die. But our only hope of having a peaceful life is if America stays strong. We haven't done that. Christians are now being persecuted in greater numbers than ever in history. Jews are being persecuted again as if we're headed toward a new Holocaust. It's time for American leaders who have taken an oath to the United States Constitution and to this country to whom much is given from them much will be required there's going to be a day of judgment on America if we don't rise to the occasion and use what we have been blessed with that I yield back